March the 23rd, 2024. Guys, you're looking at an image. This is from a satellite called Stereo Ahead. And it's very close to the Earth. So it's right now it's almost giving us an Earth-facing perspective because, it, like I said, it, in its orbit right now, which is, is in the orbit that Earth is around the Sun. It's planted there on purpose. It's very old and very, the images are very grainy. It's, I think it's well beyond the expected life of these satellites have been up forever, both the Stereo A and Stereo B. Again, both are very close to the Sun, but this is Stereo A. Today's date, now universal time, here is 3.23 this morning. But come back about five hours and you're going to be dealing with around 10.23 or so, depending if East Coast, Central Time, whatever, before midnight here. Now, kind of, I was kind of waiting to put this up until we saw the CME models because this is a X flare, a very long duration X flare. I'm going to show you the graph. In other words, it didn't just peak flash and uh, shoot out a certain amount of energy. This thing lasted for a while. But uh, very symbolic looking image of our sun in this day and time, if you ask me. Now, let's change satellites. This is a Solar Dynamics Observatory, also Earth-facing perspective, different satellite. This is a, it's filtered so you can look directly at the sun. You can't see outside of the images because it's so filtered down. You're not seeing the background, but that does give you quite a, a good look at what's going on on our sun. We actually have two very active sunspots that are now earth facing. Here, this is that long duration X flare. You've got a smaller flare here, very powerful, but notice how short it is. That's called a short duration flare here. Actually, it's multiple flares if you look at it closely. Now, here, look how long that lasts. That just increases the amount of time our upper atmosphere is ionized, and that interferes with uh, communications, air, air traffic, uh, shortwave, ham, things like that. Now, same satellite, different camera, different filter, same timing. You can see both flares. And this long duration x flare at the top it did a couple different things and that's what you're seeing with the double wings out on the first image in this video that stereo a Im image but it created a coronal mass ejection then the sun's gravity pulled back in some of that energy it didn't all escape into space and when you see this fire erupt up through this area here let it play back through that's where the energy was pulled back to the surface of the sun and it created a secondary flare called a hider h-y-d-e-r flare and that creates another explosion but again there's that long du duration flare and here are the uh, flares coming from the uh, middle or the lower uh, sunspot area now remember the earth if you look at the ecliptic, this sunspot here is very close, maybe just a little lower, but so is the Earth. It's more right here in the ecliptic. In other words, we don't rotate perfectly around the sun's equator. The, our orbit is slightly angled, and uh, so we are slightly below the Earth's, I mean the sun's equator, excuse me. These images here, these are filaments going across the sun for millions of miles. And they can erupt and throw a whip-like coronal mass ejection out in space. And sometimes they can be very dangerous as far as the earthquakes. Now, this just, we're seeing an uptick in solar activity this year. We saw a little bit of it last year, but we are going up into solar cycle 25. The sun is becoming very active, and there's a lot of information out there coming in that we're not being told what the scientists that have the actual data coming in from the satellites, the solar orbiters, all of that, and that they may be watching for something, some trouble. They, and they're not going to warn the Earth and create anarchy and l release the tax slaves, if you understand what I'm saying. But anyway, th that kind of concerns me because they know something's going on. They don't control the sun. Our Father in Heaven does. And we know that what the fourth angel in the book of Revelation does. We don't know that timing. And we don't know if it's once that is poured out, that vial is poured out, 
is it an instant event or does something start then and continue to increase slowly in other words it's not an immediate wipe out of everything just the increasing heat the scorching of men and if that's the case it may have already been poured out but anyway because there was a lot of scorching on going on last year if you understand what i'm saying but this was a very long flare the one in the top let's look at the graphs now this was just updated but here is your flare notice how long this curve lasts or it doesn't just come up and drop like the uh, smaller m flares although these were very powerful m flares to be honest with you and the following flares are approaching again in this rise to another x flare level as we look at this but these are short bursts they come up and they drop very slowly but this one was very long i think it had something to possibly do with the extension of the flare via that hider explosion as it collides back uh, back to the surface but the flare itself lasted a long time that increases the amount of photon energy which is, gets to the earth in 8.2 minutes and ionizes the atmosphere at the speed of light but that's a photon that's light energy but the protons the density in it comes from like 24 to 48 hours in what's called the coronal mass ejections let's take a look at what they're trying to model I don't think they've completed it yet, but we're going to check. By the way, this is, if you look up X-ray flux on bpearthwatch.com, scroll down to the left in the different, there's 20 or 30 links. I can't keep up with it. And Tina takes care of that. But um, you can find this chart right there, X-ray flux, and that's telling you the energy. Notice the X here, the M and Cs. So we breached the X here. Looks like it was a, maybe a... 1.1 or 1.8 right in that area we'll see on the uh, charts themselves but it looks like with this chart increasing very quickly now it's been coming up from these m flares to the x flares drop back had to release that amount of energy but it's building back up and that's why we're having a very increased percentage a chance of more x flares today and here it's giving us the uh, data itself. This was an X 1.1. The other ones are strong M43s and M53. That was the strongest one, and that would be the last major flare. But this flare is not over. The second line right there has not been completed yet. But look right here, instead of a 0.01% chance, like you see a lot, we're still at a 30% chance of X flare, 80% chance of M flares, 99% chance of the smaller c flares but proton event at cmes 99 percent and there was a cme involved in this massive explosion now this was updated at uh, 10 uh, a.m utc time this morning so we're looking at about 5 a.m this morning east coast somewhere in that area but it says a halo CME was observed leaving the sun early on March 23rd is currently being modeled. An impact past Earth is likely within 72 hours. Neither of these models are showing that explosion. There's other things that had happened before it. But they're modeling this thing and it looks very large and they do know, again, a halo, and that's why you see it all the way around, wrapped around the sun, was observed. And so that is going to, information is going to come in, and that will be my update. As soon as these models are update, updated, it will give us an idea of the strength and the timing of impact. It's important now. We need to pay attention to all the signs in heaven because not only does man know something's coming, but the devil knows something else is coming, and that's our Father and our Savior. They're returning too. But remember, the Antichrist appears first. And he will mimic everything that we think we know about Christ and his return. He's got to come back as a savior in order to fool the world. And guys, that goes hand in hand with the World War III predictions and what was the addition to the original Albert Pike letter. You've read it about the three world wars. But the third world war section was not in the original book, but more than likely added by the same group but it mentions that the world will be so disillusioned by what they thought the religion was and more than likely that's going to have something to do with the false one appearing first 
fooling everyone. Everyone will lose their compass, it talks about, and the nihilist already have been released. Look around. The destruction, both politically, in the streets, it's all across the globe. Almost complete chaos, if you look at it. And there's just the Lord's holding back from complete global chaos. Uh, and I, he, I think he's doing it because, as it says, he does not want to lose anyone. And the fourth angel, again, is his name, he's, his, uh, excuse me, M-O is the angel of repentance. It's why men get scorched, but they refuse to repent in the book of Revelation. That's what we're dealing with now, both politically, physically, in the heavens and on earth. It's God's attempt, or God is trying to get our attention. Things are about to change. But guys, keep your eyes open. And uh, someone very wise mentioned to me in an email not too long ago that they had changed their prayer. Instead of praying and asking for things to happen, they started praying and praising God and thanking God for what they had. And it started changing the way events happened. So think about that. You know, that shows that you have faith, right? That's what he wants you to have. We're watching it, guys. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.